they said, okay, I've done all my preparation. I'm just gonna sit back now. Like when he comes, he comes. And by the end of their preparation, the end of their efforts, then God. Um, what? Say what? R right now. Um, I thought we were all sleeping. I thought this is the member in the group that doesn't have the money, doesn't have ID, forgot their keys at home, asking for lifts. This is that friend. And this is a very unreliable individual. This is a person that is not proactive, who is thoughtless, and then seeks to others to cure them of their thoughtlessness. welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. So my name is Aquia B and here on this channel I cover all things faith, culture and encouragement and as you can see from the title of today's video I am encouraging you to be expectant and this is just as much of an encouragement as it is a conviction and I can't wait to share with you today we're going to be going through Matthew 25 and we're going to be talking about the parable of the ten virgins. So please get your notepad, grab your bible, grab a cup of tea, grab some snacks and get back because we're going to get straight into the word. You're going to feel so encouraged. You're going to feel so edified by this breakdown of scripture and I just cannot wait to get into it. I'm so excited to share this with you and I really hope that you're bringing that same excitement into today's video. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, before I actually get into the parable of the 10 virgins and some deductions from that, I've been gone for what seems like forever and I'm so excited, as you can tell, I'm just like bouncing off my seat because I've just finished with university, my exams are handed in, my deadlines are complete, even before the due date. And that is just a testimony in and of itself. I will someday share my education testimony and just the faithfulness of God, the experiences that I've had at university, the people that I've met, the things I've been able to do through Christ. And that encouragement will just be so profound here on this channel. I just cannot wait to share it. Um, but for now, I've finished university. I'm living life through rose tinted glasses right now and I just cannot wait to see what God has got in store for me in the next season of life. I just cannot wait to jump back into consistency on this channel and to just share with you guys encouragement and just really bring to you all the facets of my channel. I cannot wait to bring all of those things to you in this coming season and I just cannot wait for it. Um, but yeah, I've been gone for that time because of purely university. I've been trying to get the best grades that I can, get the most consistent and up-to-date high grades that I can and just really be proud of the work that I submit and I think that I've really been trying to channel the um, everything that you do, do it as unto Christ because this is the one shot that I get, um, this is my degree and I've never done this kind of high level education before. So I really just wanted to do myself proud, my family proud, and to also please the Lord with my studies. So I'm so grateful that God has graced me enough to be able to see me to the end of university. Um, and with that mini testimony and thanks to God out of the way for university, I hope that you'll forgive me for the part that I've taken away from uh, YouTube and the time that I've taken away and that you will welcome me back warmly to share the word with you today. So we're going to jump into Matthew 25. Um, but first, let me read the scripture for you. Okay, so today I'm reading from the New King James Version in Matthew 25, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through to 13. And this is the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. So it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. 
Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So that is the scripture that we're going to be basing today's video on. So in the next part, let's get into some deductions. Okay, so now let's get into some deductions. Um, let's start off with the first verse. So immediately from the first verse, we see that this is an analogy about the kingdom of heaven. So it's not literally about um, not being allowed to go to a wedding. It's about um, that alignment of the truth with a analogy. So it's talking about certain people being allowed into um, the kingdom of heaven and certain people being shut out. Um, and we know that this is an invitation that's sent to all of these 10 virgins. So they were all expectant um, to be in attendance at this wedding. And as per usual, I have uh, a Bible commentary that I also um, did some reading through. And that was the uh, Bible commentary from David Guzik. And that was really helpful in just some key things that you wouldn't really pick up just reading the Bible straight. Um, some context and things like that. So I found that quite useful um, for my Bible reading. Um, so then after that, uh, it says, five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. So that immediately just separates them. There's five of them that are wise and thoughtful, and there's five of them that are foolish and thoughtless. Um, so immediately, I think actually David Guzik mentioned that there were some of them that were uh, thoughtful and some of them are thoughtless. And it was so interesting. I think that was actually somebody that he quoted. I don't think he said it, um, that some of them are thought, thoughtful and some of them are thoughtless and this is kind of going into the theme of the video which is be expectant be expectant as children of god we know that god is a good father in heaven and that is going to be another video because god being a good father in heaven is just like been a massive revelation to me recently um and he's just teaching me so much about him every day um so five of them being thoughtful, five, five of them being thoughtless, be expectant. How can you be thoughtless and being expectation of something? So that immediately separates the two groups of the virgins. So then it says um, about the oil that they had with them. And obviously we know the properties of oil, um, healing, anointing, um, polishing, all these different things. So oil itself um, is such a great tool to have in preparation for something. Um, so they've taken that oil with them. Some have taken extra oil with them. Some have taken just enough. So they're basically doing bare minimum. Um, so we could liken this to maybe just saying, I'm a Christian, but then bearing no fruit of the Holy Spirit. Like that doesn't really make sense. You need to be constantly proactively seeking Christ, picking up your cross, serving others and, um, you know, living that life that is in opposition, that is different to the world. Um, so then we go on to say they all slumbered and slept because the bridegroom tarried. This is from the KJV. I'm reading from my trusty Bible now. Um, so the bridegroom was delayed and this is something that we can all <laughs> expect when um, there's a season of waiting, there's a season of impatience, you feel, oh my goodness, this is not coming yet and I thought that it would be here by now and it's not and I'm feeling frustrated and I'm feeling anxious. Let me just, you know, wait it out and I'll just do nothing and it'll, you know, if it happens, it happens, if it doesn't, if it, do it doesn't. Um, but they all slept. So this means that they all had that peace in knowing that they could rest, but half of them shouldn't have been because they were not prepared. So after that, um, there was a cry saying, go out and meet the bridegroom, he's here. Like, come on, you've done your rest, you've done your sleeping now, this, there was a delay, you've slept, but now the time is here. And this is when the real drama happens. This is when the real drama starts to unfold because half of them were ready to get rare in. They were like, yeah, on it, got my stuff, let me just get my bags and I can leave the house. And the other half of them were like, um, what? Say what? R right now, um, I thought we were all sleeping. I thought this is the member in the group that doesn't have the money, doesn't have ID, 
forgot their keys at home, asking for lifts. This is that friend and this is a very unreliable individual. This is a person that is not proactive, who is thoughtless and then seeks to others to cure them of their thoughtlessness. And this is not the type of person, this is not the type of individual that God is wanting us to be. He's encouraging us, convicting us to be that proactive person that has a heart of preparedness for what he's got and what he's uh, and when he's coming back. So this isn't an ex this is an example of what to do and what not to do. He's already giving this to us in this um, analogy so that we don't have to be like these people. It's definitely a warning sign. Do not be like this these foolish virgins, be like the wise ones. So then um, the foolish say to the ones that are wise, give us some of the oil that you have so that we can light, um, we can light our lamps and stuff. Um, and the other ones are like, um, no, like we're prepared, we're good. Like you can go buy some, the shop's still open, go grab some, come back and then we can, we can get going from there. Um, but we're gonna meet you there because we're ready. So this is the kind of preparedness that the wise ones have. They already have everything together. They're just gonna go straight there. Um, and it's interesting to me how, um, how the ones that weren't wise really did look to the ones that were wise to gain from them after they were not proactive. So the foolish ones, even if after they've not been proactive, even after they failed the first hurdle of not even preparing, everybody knows that phrase, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Even then they have that, they, their mindset is still the same. And I think that's so interesting that um, the word includes this, these two words, these two specific words. And these really got highlighted to me as I was reading through this yesterday and preparing for this video. Give us. Uh, that's in verse eight. So this is when they're asking for oil from the wise. The foolish say, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. Give us. So they're still not in that mindset of, oh, let me go to the shop. Let me quickly uh, see if my neighbors have oil. Let me quickly, you know, get something together. They're still in a position of, yeah, like, you know, like, give me, give me some oil, please. Like, he's here now. Like, give me something. Like, I want, I want, I want. They don't want to do. They don't want to be proactive. And still that resistance in their heart, that unrepentance of their sin of laziness and unpreparedness is still in them, even to the day of the bridegroom arri bridegroom's arrival. So that really just stuck out to me. And um, knowing that we need to have that heart of preparedness, we cannot have a lazy spirit, we cannot have um, a spirit of procrastination because God is coming. And whether we like it or not, whether we're prepared or not, he is coming. So be like the wise. Um, and then Finally, the last bit comes where it says that the door was shut to them and then um, the door was shut after the wise went in. So after the wise went in, God is putting that divide there. He's putting that barrier, um, separating the wheat from the chaff. He's saying that these are the wise. Again, there's that separation all the way through this um, parable. He's giving separation from the start he calls out the wise from the foolish he's giving separation with those that have oil and those that don't have oil he's giving um separation between those that are on their way and those that are are still walking away so the ones that are going to the uh, feast going to the marriage they're going towards the marriage the ones that are foolish they're walking away from the marriage they're going to get oil they're, they're going further away um and then finally he's giving that separation when he's saying these ones were let in and these ones were kept out these ones are the ones that the door was shut to so even until that last point they have that unrepentant heart and then they want to go and like knock on the door once they know that the party started no the door is shut the door is shut. They were given plenty warning. They knew from the start, they were expectant for a wedding, but they weren't ready to prepare. So I just wanted to um, give that encouragement that as the last verse says, it says, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh. So we do not know, and we need to have a heart of preparedness. And this passage just really set me up for the encouragement that I wanna just breathe life into everybody that is viewing this video with because 
God is a good God and he wants us to be expectant. All the time, the faithfulness of the wise virgins was proven true, was proven correct, was proven with faithfulness by God. He, they they were able to sleep, they were able to get rest, just as the foolish, they were able to make their way to the wedding, just as the foolish had expected, but they actually finally got to taste the fruits of their labour at the wedding, unlike the foolish. So those differentiations are key and us being the ones that are waiting, hopefully in a wise manner, we can have that expectancy knowing that there will be a wedding at the end and that we will not be shut out. So I just wanted to give that encouragement. Um, God is a God that wants us to keep that expectancy. Don't get lazy. Now is not the time to get lazy. Now is the time to stay prepared. Even when the wise virgins were sleeping, they were prepared. They had everything ready so that when the call was made, they were vigilant enough to have everything by their side ready to get going because they were waiting for this. They were waiting. They had that heart of expectancy. They didn't have a heart of laziness. They didn't have a complacent spirit. They were ready and active to go. Um, so I just want to give that encouragement to you. If you feel like you're in a waiting period and that nothing is, you're not tasting the fruits of your labour, you're not tasting the fruits of your faithfulness, you're not tasting the fruits of that expectancy, that it's not, you're not able to tangibly experience it just yet, know that the wedding is coming and that it is close. Be encouraged by that, know that, whether you're a student and you're not at the end of your exams yet, whether you're waiting to get married, whether you're waiting to hear back from a doctor's report, knowing that you have clear medical reports, know that God is faithful. Be expectant, stay expectant, because we know who we serve. We serve a faithful God that will not leave us nor forsake us, and he is with us in the valleys just as well as he's with us on the mountaintop. So know that. God is faithful and he wants us to be expectant. Get excited again. I want you to get excited again. I'm excited again. I'm so excited and I want you to get excited again. Um, but today I just wanted to leave you with that encouragement. If you're feeling in a place, even of just stagnance, you're feeling, I'm doing everything. I'm, I'm being with God, I'm being still, but I just don't feel like, I don't feel fulfilled this way. I don't feel fulfilled where I, I need to be fulfilled. Be encouraged in knowing that God loves expectant, proactive followers. He loves that. He loves that so much. Um, and don't be discouraged. Don't feel depleted enough to go into that space of being like the fo foolish virgins who were doing bare minimum. They were thinking that the bridegroom was going to come and then they were just going to go in with what they had. No. At any time, even at the end of your hope, God is there they had reached the end of their hope. They'd reached the end of their preparation. They said, okay, I've done all my preparation. I'm just gonna sit back now. Like when he comes, he comes. And by the end of their preparation, the end of their efforts, then God. So know that God is there and he's waiting for you and he's wanting to fulfill and meet that expectation that you have of him because he is a good God. He's the only one that can meet those expectations. Um, so I just wanted to leave that with you today um, and I pray that God is with you, that he's close to you and that you'll feel his presence, that you will be in his word, be encouraged, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. You can only be renewed by his good word. You can only be renewed by his word and the world is not going to refresh you and your relationship is not going to refresh you and you car is not going to refresh you and you set of makeup is not going to refresh you but the spirit of God will refresh you. God will refresh you. Um, so I just wanted to leave you with that encouragement and I hope that you have a blessed week. I hope you have a blessed day. Um, and yeah, expect so many more videos because I have so much more to share and so much more encouragement to give as well. Um, so yeah, that is the end of today's video. Please make sure to subscribe, like this video, share it with a friend that needs some encouragement, share it with a friend that is sh sharing with you that they're not feeling encouraged or they're giving up on their expectations, share this with them to be encouraged. Um, and I pray that you're encouraged also. Um, and make sure to like this video if you have enjoyed it for more content just like this. And I will be back with you very, very soon. So stay blessed and bye.